Hello, I'm Carolyn Judge and welcome to my um, tutorial on how to paint an apple in watercolour. This is specifically about how to paint an apple realistically. Um, I have previously posted a tutorial on YouTube with a link on my website that describes um, how to get started with watercolour. I talk about the materials that I use I talk about how to um, work with reference photographs. It's just a couple of changes since I made that that um, that video. The first one is that I now only use 600 GSM or 300 pound paper. Uh, I never use 300 GSM paper. I used to find that stretching paper was labour intensive and messy. I, I, uh, I, I, I love 600 GSM paper for the fact that it doesn't buckle even with pretty heavy washes on it. So to me, uh, 600 GSM paper is, is just beautiful to use. It is an expensive item, so when you're doing your practice pieces you might want to stick with um, cheaper paper, but if you're going to paint something really worthwhile keeping then 600 GSM to me is the way to go. My paints are still similar, I still work with the same limited palette. Now um, I use predominantly Daniel Smith paints, it used to be predominantly Schmincke. I do still use both and they're both beautiful. The tutorial that we're going to work on um, in this video is how to paint an apple realistically. Uh, this is the apple that we're going to work with. Uh, it's got lots of lovely rich colours in it and as you can see it's got two highlights that we're going to retain throughout the painting. We're going to get this rich deep colour here and then it's lighter here and here and it's these changes in tone that give us the sense of um, the form. Really the, the, the purpose of learning to paint an apple is so that in my next tutorial, um, which is going to be a portrait, you'll be able to use all these same skills. If you can paint an apple, you can paint just about anything. It's all about creating form, leaving light areas, creating dark areas, um, all with lots of control and skill with your watercolours. So the first thing that we need to do with our apple is to draw it. I talk about drawing in my um, introductory tutorial. It's about 27 minutes into the tutorial if you want to skip the rest of it. So what I use is um, a method of using transfer paper. So I hope that you'll give this a go and join me for this tutorial. So the first thing that I'm going to do is wet the whole apple within the, the lines. And this is going to be um, a reasonably standard part of the method. We'll repeat this many times. And a nice even layer of water. That's important. You don't want to have lots of puddles sitting on your paper. Puddles are bad news. Nice even layer of water. And I'm just going to leave that to sit there for a, a, a minute. Um, what's going to happen is that the, the water is going to absorb down into the fibres of this paper this paper is almost like card, you know, it doesn't bend easily. It's really not paper at all. Um, it's 100% cotton, so think of it really as a thick piece of fabric. Now you might be thinking, God, that's going to just take forever to paint an apple. And it is a, a method that takes time. It helps if you've got patience. But once you start working on something bigger and more complicated like a portrait, you can start working on different sections. Also in the, in the final step where you're waiting for it to dry, you can uh, pick up another painting and start working on it. 
So what you're really wanting is to try and see whether the shine has gone off of this or not. And I don't know if I can get the light on this painting to show, um, but I, I can see that I've got an even layer of water on there and it's still shiny so it's just a little bit soon for me to continue on. So my, my water is absorbed and I'm going to re-wet it but this time I'm not going to wet where the highlights are. So and I'm going to pick up a, um, a fairly light layer of oral and yellow but you, you can really just use any yellow. This is a Daniel Smith yellow and you can see it's uh, it's just a, a, a light layer and I'm just going to dab around the highlight and then I'm going to paint the rest of it and again dab around the highlight. So we're not ignoring the highlight, we're not making a hard edge around it we're just um, painting the whole apple and we're letting the pigment run but we're not putting our brush actually into the highlight. Now because we're working with 600 GSM paper or 300 pound paper this paper will stay wet for a long time and that's good because it means that we can keep working we don't have to stop now we can put another layer on so this time I'll pick up a little bit more Earl and Yellow on my brush and build up some more pigment here. The next layer that we put on after the apple has dried is going to be um, another transparent layer. Earl and Yellow is transparent and what we're doing is um, building up transparent layers of pigment like layers of glass. Incidentally for this um, project I'm using a Da Vinci number no. 12 Casaneo brush. It's got a cat's tongue. I've had it for years and I use it all the time and it's just um, it's just so versatile. Now while that's um, getting absorbed I'm just going to pick up a bit of Indian yellow and I'm going to just drop some of that in that very rich red area. Remember on our reference photo the richness of the apple is in this red so I want to emphasize that now with a richer color. My pigment is still moving and being absorbed so I know that I can keep working with my with my apple I don't have to stop yet I need to stop when the when the shine goes off of the the surface that's when it's then too dry for me to to keep working yellow is a very good base color um, especially for portraiture um, it sits very well well under fleshy tones and an apple um, obviously not the green um, but this red area is like a rich fleshy tone but yellow also works very well under green. The only time that you don't want to use yellow as a, a, a base colour is when you're using any of the blues because then you'll end up with some, some green. So I've still got time to keep working on this layer so I'm just going to build up my my richness of colour here, a bit more oral and yellow. So you can see that within one one wetting of my apple I'm getting quite a bit of colour and it's all blending beautifully. It's all it's all looking very rich and beautiful. The paint is all blending, looking very even, and that's what you want for your portrait. Remember that this this tutorial is is all about getting some practice. For
for a, a, a human portrait. Because my paper is just the right wetness and because my brush isn't loaded with water but it's also not too dry, that's how I'm able to just keep working and working this. If I now dropped water onto this, I would disrupt the tension on the surface and it would, it would um, undo the work that I've just done. So it's, it's about knowing how wet your paint needs to be, how wet your brush needs to be, and how wet your paper needs to be. It's all related and it's all about having the ability to keep working the layers without having to stop in between each one. So being able to work like this really speeds things along. When this is dried and we put our next layer on, this pigment won't move. It's all getting embedded into the paper. Now I'm just going to dry. I've rinsed my brush and I'm just drying it off. And I'm just going to pick up just a little bit more Aurelin yellow. And I'm just going to dab around that highlight and this one. And I'm going to leave it there because it's it's uh, it's feeling like a good first layer. Um, I don't know how easy it is for the camera to pick up the light, the the uh, wetness of the apple. You can see I can move it all around. The pa the the paint isn't running. It's um, it's it's drying. My painting has dried completely and it's very good practice um, especially when we work on our portrait is to pay attention to these pencil lines um, the, the more layers that we put on this painting the more these pencil lines will get embedded when we work on a portrait if we rub our lines out and then get concerned about where the line should be, don't forget that you can always go back to your original drawing and redraw them in if necessary. Be careful using the eraser on this paper, it can take the surface off. I'm going to continue building up these yellow tones. So again I'm going to wet the whole thing. and then darkening up here and then a colour that I can see would be nice to start building into the apple is a bit of orange so I'm going to add a little bit of uh, transparent orange Now what I, I can do, if I choose to, is start adding just a little bit of red and the red I'm going to use initially is alizarin crimson. It's quite a nice, quite a nice red and it's just going to help me figure out where to place the red. So I'm just going to add a tiny amount of sap green. My brush is 
um, I'm keeping it quite dry. I'm getting towards the end of what this layer can take. But I can I can just add a very controlled layer of of green here. So we've got some real color changes here. We've got some some highlights that we've retained. So again, just dabbing with an almost dry brush on an almost dry painting with paint that's that's not too wet either. And I'm just going to leave that there to dry. But I'm not going to build up more layers from here in exactly the same way, using exactly the same process. But for now, this needs to dry because the shine has gone off it and there's not much more I can do. This is now dry and I'm going to put the third layer on. Because this is a, a repeat of the last two layers, I'm going to put this layer on and then probably the next one as well, but I'm going to speed the film up uh, so you can see the progress but without um, the, the, the brush stroke by brush stroke time it takes. This layer is now dry, so now I'm going to put on the fourth layer. Um, and again, I'm just going to repeat what I've done before. This time I'm going to use the same colors again. Indian yellow, Aurelian yellow, transparent orange, and alizarin crimson. And I'm just going to keep building up these, these tones. Um, I'm going to build up the, the, the darks through here. All these colors are embedded into the paper, into those fibers. A huge difference between my painting and the photograph at this stage are colors. I've not been overly focused on colors up till now, just those tonal values. But now in this fifth layer, I'm going to add some color that's a bit more realistic. And the colors that I've mixed for this next layer, which is quite an important layer. Uh, for the green, I've mixed some sap green with Indian yellow. And for the red area, I've mixed some alizarin crimson with phthalo blue and just a little bit of transparent orange. If you look at this, you can see in, in this green area, it's quite green in places. Sometimes it's brown, sometimes it's orangey. And you can look at it and think, well, how do I know what those colors really are? So here's a, a, a good tip. And it's to get a white piece of paper with a little spy hole in it and just block out the rest of the image and look only through that little square and what you can see here is you can tell quite clearly what that green shade is and over here you can tell that it's it's quite an orangey color but then look at the color down here against white paper it's almost black and then along here we've got a very cold green on the side there um, dry my brush off quite a bit and pick up my new green and drop that in around there and 
and I'm going to, even though it's a cold green down the side here, I'm just going to start by putting green there. And that's, that's a much more realistic looking green. I'll just wet my brush and pick up some of my colour. I'll just show you the, the colour mix that I've just made in my palette. This is the alizarin crimson transparent orange and a little bit of phthalo blue and I've mixed it to a point where I, I feel like I'm starting to get closer to the apple colour. The colour around the bottom of the apple here is quite a, an orangey yellow colour so I'm just going to keep that orange colour in there for now. Of course you're going to be working on a, on a different apple image to me but the principles are all still the same. The other colour that I feel is missing is a bit of a brown colour and I think that that brown is going to um, help blend the red and the green together. So I'm going to use Indian yellow and just a little bit of alizarin crimson and a tiny amount of phthalo green to give me a bit of a brownish colour. Now that my painting is dry, I'm just going to put a little bit, bit of detail onto my apple now. I'm going to paint in the stalk, so I'm going to work in a small space, so I'm going to use a small brush. And this is a Da Vinci uh, Maestro number no. 5. And I'm just going to wet the stalk itself. And then I've mixed up a little bit of burnt umber and sepia brown and I'm just going to paint that in. Uh, while my red is drying, I'm just going to make another another mix of that red, but I'm going to make it even cooler, a much more cooler shadow colour. A little bit of um, making a sort of a purple colour. I'll just show you making that purple colour here, but I want to warm it up. That is a little bit too cold so I'm just gonna put a little bit of orange in it that's a little bit brown so I'm just gonna add a little bit more red add a little bit more blue and that's a pretty nice it's a warm shadow color it's a bit of a contradiction but um, that's the color that we want in here And that's starting to look close to completion. So to finish this now is just doing a variation of what I've shown you. You can keep adding layers in the same way. You can keep adding more and more paint. Just do it in the same way. Um, I'll probably add one or two more layers just to embellish this but it's starting to feel quite finished. That is uh, the essence of how to paint an apple. Um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and make a few more changes. And I'm very happy with that. Pick up a little bit of orange and finish along the bottom here in orange. There's one last thing now to do. And that's to paint the shadow. I'm just going to paint that with the same shadow colour I've just used. So the very last thing that I'm going to do here is um, after painting in my shadow is to soften the line between the apple and the shadow and the way I'm going to do that is just to with a damp brush just brush over that line and take the colors of the apple down into the shadow. and that will create a softness. And that is my apple finished. There's still a little bit more fussing that I could do with it, but I think that's a good example of the skills that we're going to use for the portrait.